I recently got commissioned to do some signs for a subdivision in the town that I work in. No problem, I do signs all the time. The challenge was that they were exterior, needing to last a long time, and they're 78 inches wide. My CNC cutting area is only 22 inches in the open X direction. So what do I do? Well, we'll get to that. First, I decided to go with HDPE, which is high density polyethylene. You might be able to see here that the inside of it is tan and the outside is green, and was happy to discover that it could be worked with all my common woodworking tools. Next, I had to make some reference holes for some dowel pins to fit in that will ensure my workpiece shifts the exact distance I specified in my tiling. Confused? Uh, let me try and explain it a little better. The concept of tiling is, let's say I wanted to put a design on this board. Well, you're gonna have to use your imagination. I suppose I could just do it this way on the table. But, let's say I've got a board that's longer than my table is wide, and I wanna engrave down the entire thing. Well, thankfully, a lot of design software is gonna come with an automatic tiler where you, tiler where you specify the width that you want engraved or cut or, or whatever's being done to your piece, then as long as you have the proper you know-how know, know -how and system to shift your piece the exact amount or that exact distance uh, you specify, it'll continue in picking up and do your design further down the line. So in our case, we put a hole right here in the table that's the exact fit of a 3 8 inch dowel rod. And there's another tool path that when the workpiece is in place, we'll put that exact hole on the workpiece exactly 20 inches away from the first uh, from the first hole. So once the engraving is done, this will be removed. You'll shift it down the 20 inches, or that's what we're doing, and put the dowel in that hole, matching up with this one. And as long as you're lined up perfectly. It should pick up without a hitch and no one would ever know that it was separated. This half inch thick material may not look like much, but it's hefty. It wasn't exactly easy navigating it around my tiny garage by myself. Thankfully I had Anders around to help with a little of it. Normally I'd use a less damaging method to hold the work to the table, but with as expensive as this stuff is and how long the texturing toolpath was going to take, I didn't want to take any chances of it coming loose. I screwed the thing directly to my spoil board after making pilot holes and counter pours. The first cuts on every tile were the holes for the registration pins, exactly 20 inches on center away from the pin holes I just made in the spoil board. We've just done our first tiling material pin location. Excellent job on this end. But then as we move down in here, I realize I cut the whole blank too narrow. And we ran out of space. Awesome. No big deal. It'll still serve as a reference, but we'll just have to really rely on the edge of the table that it's aligned against here, this notch, and that hole. As long as those all sync up, we should still be fine. The second cut on every tile was the big one, 3D texturing, done with a quarter inch ball nose bit. Don't let the time lapse here fool you. Each tile took several hours. This one, the 3D texturing toolpath alone, clocked out after 3 hours and 35 minutes to be exact. The 3D toolpath has an eighth of an inch exterior allowance programmed in, which means the edge of the ball nose bit will stay to the outside of the design by an eighth of an inch. To clean this up, I ran a profile around the entire design with a 1 inch diameter end mill. 
It was shallow enough to not disturb the texturing, but deep enough to remove the green layer. The final cut on every tile was the profile of the sign itself, using a 1 quarter inch upcut spiral end mill. After that, it was just rinse and repeat three more times. Take up the screws, shift the material, align it, screw it back down, and cut the next tile. One setting I worked in was a half inch overlap of tiles. I thought this might give me some play in case things didn't line up as desirably as I'd hoped. That really only ended up being an issue in the Z direction. I watched the beginning of each 3D cut carefully and made the best adjustments I could to make it as perfect as possible. I started getting some enjoyment from drilling holes into this material. The chip came out as this continuous spiral with green tips. I just thought that was really cool. By the time I got around to cutting tile 4, things were already getting pretty tight for space in my tiny garage shop. I was crawling under the workpiece over and over again to get to the controls and the dust collector and to put in screws, so I figured it was time to get smart, channel my inner Bob Claggett, and build a device that would make life easier. Let's switch gears here for a minute. Hey, I'm Simon at Do It Projects, and today I'm going to show you how to make remote for a button across the room. So I just finished writing up this crazy long script of code uh, that's pretty much going to allow me to speak, voice activate the router on my CNC. Uh, as well as my dust collection because right now when I do large projects it's blocked and I'm not able to walk there unless I, I crawl under it so we're gonna uh, we're gonna give it a test right now here we go Alexa turn on my router okay Simon it works I have to admit that I got pretty nervous here. One silly mistake at this point meant a hell of a lot of hours and expensive material wasted. Thankfully, it all went perfect, right down to the final profile cut, and boy did it feel good. A number of tabs were intentionally left to hold the sign in place after the profile cuts, so the next step was to separate the sign from the waist, and I used a jigsaw for that. Then I cleaned up all the edges with a palm sander.
My bits aren't the newest or the sharpest, so each cut left some fraying. But it didn't take long at all to lightly scrape it clean with one of my favorite tools for the job, the tip of a paint can opener. After a quick wipe and a spray, it was complete and ready to install. This whole project was a challenge for me as it was my first time working with HDPE, my first time having to tile a piece bigger than my machine, and easily the largest single part item I've ever done on any machine. Given all that, I couldn't be happier with the result. As always, thank you for watching Do It, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel. As of the release of this video, we're less than 50 away from our first goal of 1,000 subscribers. And the more we grow, the more motivated we are to keep bringing you content just like this and a whole lot of other stuff we're into. If you're wondering what that is, check out some of the links on this screen.